Right, it's mailbag time. Got loads here. I probably should split this into two mailbags, but I'm already two months ahead of mailbag videos. Two months. So I'm going to do two weeks worth in one go to try and catch up a little bit. So the links down below for these things if I can give you links. If you ever see one of my mailbag videos and you see something you're interested in, then always go have a look down in the description because I put links down there for just about everything. It's an LED tester. There's no screws in it. Put a battery in. There's no screws in it. <laughs> what do you think they'd at least include the screws? Anyway, it takes another battery and you just plug your LED into these. You see the different milliamp ratings across here. Check different brightnesses of different currents. And you can do dual LEDs as well. Common cathode, common anode. I guess you have to push it to make it work. Not to then screw it shut, but would have not been much effort to include the screws, surely. Oh wait, almost ruined that one. Look, they're in the bag. It's fine. While I didn't tuck them inside it like this, wouldn't that have been better? Then you're definitely going to find them. No oh, well. Some screws. Or, yeah, I suppose. Metric screws, I suppose. Crosshead, 304 stainless, apparently. 2.5 by 8mm. Yeah, just stocking up. Nothing too exciting about that. And it's a bunch of washers. Oh, the dividers come out. We're mixed up now. No, oh, I'll never know which one's which now. I'll never forget. I figure that out. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic. 3mm up to the thing. 12mm or something like that. There's no labelling in here. The picture's on the internet. When I purchased this thing, showed labelling to show you which one was which in the dividers. Yes, I'm sure I can figure something out for that, just like write it on the top or something. But yeah, I think it was like, was it 2mm or 2.5mm up to 12 or 10? Something like that. I didn't have any washers, not like an assortment like this, so time to stock up. Also, say hi to Julian for me. Click subscribe right now, quick, before you forget. You can blame him for that. I thought it was a brilliant idea. I haven't seen him use it much though. Washers. These ones are really thin ones, like shims. So these may be useful too. Those are standard quite thick ones, quite strong. These ones are much thinner. Sometimes you've got like a, a bolt which is just a little bit short for what you want. And you can't put a thick washer on. Sometimes just having a really thin washer to put on is handy. So I've got those ones. Star Trek Discovery Season 4. Now I was looking through my DVDs. Trying to sort of look for something to watch. And I was thinking, I'm sure I've watched all of them. But I couldn't find Season 4. So I purchased it. I really hope that wasn't a mistake. I may have two copies now. I don't know. So this one is completely wrapped in tape, so I'm going to have to use an actual knife for this one. Oh, that's well packaged. That's good. So these are 9.6 volt, 3 amp hour, nickel metal hydride battery packs. And these are meant for radio control use, you know, like cars and stuff like that, wherever it may be. But I've got an alternative use for these, which is battery packs for test equipment. So some test equipment I get, it needs a 6 volt or 9 volt battery pack in it. Now, I've already purchased some 6 volt ones which arrived before and I was waiting for some 9 volt ones because there's certain equipment I've got here which could use a 9 volt battery pack and so I've decided to get some of these. I've got nickel metal hydride rather than NICAD because nickel metal hydride lasts a lot longer. It seems to hold a charge for quite a long time, that sort of stuff. The power tools and stuff that I've had which have had nickel metal hydride batteries in them have lasted very, very well. Far exceeding NICAD tools I've ever had, so that's why I've got these. I mean, the, the equipment these are going to go in won't actually have much usage, so it's get used occasionally. So having one of these batteries in there, charge it up, and it will probably just sit there for years, not really being used. You know, it might be used a couple of times a year, if you're lucky. I've got a few of those for replacement battery packs. So there is a planned project for these, or well, at least one or two of them, at least. Make sure you watch out for those. This is a camera bag. Got a belt attachment on it. Not very convenient, but it is okay. Hopefully, it's got a shoulder strap in it. Probably does. Yeah, there it is. Carry strap there, which you attach to the outside parts. So it's just a small little camera bag, something quite small. Now my wife recently bought a camera to use when she's travelling around, you know, going overseas and going to events and stuff. She goes to. She wanted a really small camera bag. I found a one. I don't know if it's small enough. Now, fortunately, this arrived a bit late, and she's currently in the UK. So she actually found an alternative bag to use in the meantime. So she's got something, but it would have been actually been nice to actually have this arrive a bit sooner. It's my fault. Didn't order it early enough. So um, I think it's arrived about 
three days after she left. See if I got it a few days earlier, maybe it would have made it. I'm sure this will be of use to her when she comes back. I hope so anyway. It's USB C to USB three data cables, one meter long and 0.5 meters long. I want to stock up on these kinds of cables because I didn't really have much in this style. These actually arrived really quickly. I only ordered these last week, so that is actually impressively good speed. I needed one of these about 10 days ago, and they've already arrived. That's pretty good. Speedy, because it came from China. And these are some more washers. These are like star locking washers kind of thing. M3 up to M16. I mean, these basically come about because the amount of times I've been retrofitting like power sockets and things like that on bits of test equipment which I'm repairing, and I just haven't had the hardware in there. I had to go hunting for it and trying to find the bits and pieces. And I've always liked to try and use these kinds of locking washers and things, but I'm sort of scrounging around my spare parts to get them. So I thought, this is just silly. Let's buy some spares. Now I've got them for future. First largest box. I'm just going to cut through the end. Looks like it's well packaged, well protected, brilliant. 11710A down converter. Got this manual, I just happened to find one locally actually. I haven't even shown you this yet. I've got it sitting right here, let me get it. Bonus mailbag item. I picked this up locally. No idea if it works. It's actually designed to work with another piece of test gear. And I think it down converts by 5 MHz or something like that. So it injects a higher frequency here. Drops it down by about 5 megahertz and spits it back out here. I haven't tried this yet, I've got no idea. And this is actually designed to work with a particular piece of equipment. But it's um, universal. I mean, it's just got power on the back. I'm doing a video on this at one point. And this is the manual for it, which I happen to find online as well. Brand new. Well, not brand new, but it's an original manual. And I always like to try and get the manuals which match. So this is for serial numbers prefix 1627. So that is 1976. This is serial number 18, so that is um, 1978. So this is slightly newer than this, which means this should actually apply quite nicely. I told you how to use it, how to repair it. Sugar so diagrams, I don't think there'd be much to it to be honest. Partsless, that's just mechanical, here we go. So the circuit diagrams in there, well, that's a block diagram. Board layouts, circuit diagram here. Yeah. This circuit diagram for it. Nice. And it's mint condition. It's really nice condition. Brilliant. Happy with that. Might be with the price, but hey, it wasn't too bad, I suppose. I've paid a lot more for manuals in the past, but this is a pretty simple manual. Actually, it's another piece of test gear I picked up as well. I should show you this before I forget about it. One thing it came with is this case, which I've never ever seen before. It's a little transport case. It goes in this case here. Unfortunately, this case is broken. It's got a bit, a bit damage on the back there, but basically it slots in. It's actually got a little bezel which goes in the front and holds it in place. It came with this, and this wasn't even in the listing. This, it just came with it. They said, oh, because it's damaged, I didn't worry about listing it. They just included it in the end. So yeah, there's that part, which I've never seen before. And this is a HP 11076A instrument case. Seems to be quite an unusual item. Fairly rare. And the next thing, this is what I actually purchased, was this thing. I've done a video on these things before, kind of. This one's a lot newer. This one is from 1982, much newer version. When I did previously, I had to do all sorts of conversions and stuff on it. It's an HP 3500A RMS voltmeter. I actually powered this up in my live stream, tested it, and it does work. It is slightly out of calibration on the like, one volt range and above. Those ones are reading a bit high. Below that, it's actually reading accurately. These ranges read perfectly fine, but these ones are reading slightly high. So I think it needs calibrating, but otherwise it looks like it's actually in really good condition and it's really nice. It's just, the amazing thing to me is that I refurbished one of these from 1965 and this is in 1982. 17 years later, they're still making it in the same form factor with the same functionality, just updated very slightly. It's amazing that it had that sort of longevity. 17 years of making one product. Imagine that today. Would that happen today? Think about it. No, it wouldn't. Just goes to show how well these things were designed in the very beginning. Next item. Here's a real knife. Okay, fairly well packaged, I suppose. Bubble wrap on the top only to try and help hold it down. Look at, look at the shape of this manual though, look at it. That's a lot of fold outs. The state there. Wow. HP 8672 a synthesized signal generator manual. Hold you just had a tear down here. Someone's taped it back together. It doesn't line up. <laughs> 
at least done it properly, never mind. So I actually have one of these things sitting here, which I picked up, I've shown him in the previous mailbag, and I am yet to look at it. Haven't powered up yet, haven't done anything with it, I know it needs recapping. This is a piece of gear I'm definitely going to be keeping, because it's an 18 gigahertz signal generator. I don't have anything to do that. This is what I'm going to be keeping it. I'm hoping I can get it all working nicely, obviously. But having a physical manual like this can actually help you to achieve that sometimes. You know, higher quality detail and circuit diagrams and stuff like that, which you may not get from an online scan. I'm just ashamed about this being a misaligned, but... Uh, so this is for serial numbers 2229A, so that's 1982. What serial number is my unit? Hold on. My unit is very slightly older, 2208. So mine is early 1982, this is mid 1982, probably. But I think it does cover it, I mean it is listed here, with changes described, this manual also works with these manuals. I mean it does mention my specific serial number here. As always, yeah, I have to look at the change log and see what differences there were. But it's nice to have a physical manual, look at the size of this thing. One more package to go, don't go yet, it's the biggest one yet. Let's get into this one. Click subscribe right now, quick. <laughs> I hit it with the box, how appropriate. So we've got some things here, these are from my oven. So I've got some window seals for the front door. Another set of window seals. We've got the inner door, outer door window seals, but they're different styles. I don't, don't know which one it is. I guess we'll find out. Then we've got this, which is the oven element, like the grill element at the top. I was looking at it the other day and I was doing a repair on it. I did a little repair video showing how to change the bulb. Firstly, the oven's a bit dirty. I should have cleaned it before I did the video. It was due for a clean and yeah, I should have done that. I was just being a bit lazy. It's since been cleaned, but you know, these are the oven elements. Now notice that one of the elements, this big U-shaped one here, on my oven, is actually a bit rusty. It's like it's being corroded, so the actual outside is going. It's, I think it's failing. I thought well, rather than waiting for it to go bang or just fail completely, I'm going to replace it. So you get the whole lot as one unit, and it's just got these little like spade terminals on the ends. Yeah, like that. Spade tunnels is welded on the end, and you have to basically take this thing out. You take the back panel off the oven, and you slide these through and hook these up. And it's got these little slots in the side here. There's little pinch pieces here, which lock in to position it. So yeah, I'll probably do a video on replacing the elements as well. I think I will be anyway. We'll see. Check out the videos down below. Check out the links down below for the items you've seen here. Subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed. Patreon support link over there. Want to help support the channel? Help me to buy things like business test equipment to fix. Catch you later. Stop recording, you bastard.